Bienvenido a nuestro canal de YouTube Pan, Pan de, vida. de Vida. Recuerden siempre darle me gusta, suscribirse y compartir nuestros videos con amigos y familiares. Activen la campanita de notificaciones. Que el Bien, Señor los bendiga. Hi everyone. Welcome to another Sunday evening. Um our pastor Navier as I like to call him Nico, um, was not able to join us today. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take over for him, right? So you guys get to hear me for the second time. I hope you guys enjoyed the first time. This is a work in progress. So um, lots of fun. Today, um, we're going to be speaking about the new year. So I found some really interesting material that we're going to discuss. I will also love your opinion in the process and it should be fun. So we'll start with a prayer. I don't know if anybody wants to say a prayer or if you guys want me to go ahead and pray. Okay, I'll pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for yet another day that we are able to gather. We are able to come together and speak about the wonderful things that you have for us. That we're able to discuss how you want us to live our lives in a way that serves you and pleases you. Heavenly Father, we are open to learning new ways. We're open to learning and seeing what it is that you want from us. So in this day, Heavenly Father, we wanna give you thanks. We wanna give you praise. And please open our hearts, our minds, give us this sermon, understanding, wisdom, so that we can understand everything we are about to learn today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So as we venture, and I say venture because learning and trying to walk in God's path is a venture. And part of that venture is a learning process. Um, I think that even if you have 15, 20, 30 years in ministry, it, it, it's always, you're always learning. And I, I think with, I, we have Pastor Luna on the line. We also have Pastor Rodriguez on the line. And I think they can agree with me. <laughs> that it doesn't matter if you've been in ministry for 50 years. You know, it's, it's a process. It's a different process for everyone. And it's also an adventure. So as I was getting ready to, I was getting the lesson plan ready of what we were going to speak about today. I asked the Lord, what he wanted me to share with you guys today. You know, what he wanted you guys to know. How will we start the new year on the right foot, right? We're all celebrating a new year. Well, basically, right? Because today's only the eighth. So we're still celebrating the new year. And that's when I understood that that's exactly what we need to discuss is celebrating the new year. In that process, as I opened up my computer and I was like, okay, before we, we dig into Bible verses of what a new year is and how do we start a new year in the right path, we want to know what's out there, what the rest of the world thinks 
and sees the new year as. Because remember that what we believe is the right way to start the new year is not gonna ever be the same as the rest of the world. As Christians, we need to start the new year and celebrate the new year in a completely different way than what the rest of the world believes it should be, right? And I believe that is so for everything. But since we're starting the new year, we're gonna go ahead and take that subject, right? And then we'll work the rest of the subjects throughout the year as, as we proceed. So I went online and there is a whole lot I mean, there is just like a plethora of like information out there of what the new year is, who started this whole idea of celebrating a new year, where it came from, um, how it was, how the process was years ago, right? There's a bunch of material and, and, and stories out there about how Celebrating the new year is a pagan holiday. Uh, for those of you that might not understand what pagan is, is basically um, people, non-believers, right? Of a religion. So I started reading and reading and reading. Now, something that I want you guys to understand is that I have heard in the past that as Christians, we need to be really careful what we read, what we see on TV, and, and it's true for the most part, you know, because we definitely don't want to log into any pornographic, you know, like and we don't want to sit there and watch porn or anything like that. But I think for certain issues, it is very important to read and get informed. What we need to do is that we need to understand how we get informed. When we get ready to research anything, whether we're gonna start reading a book, watching a movie, listening to a documentary, you know, listening to the news, or even just sitting down with a group of individuals to just discuss a subject, we need to ask God for this sermon. We need to ask the Lord to give us wisdom, help us understand what we are about to engage in, what we're about to read, what we're about to see on the TV, or even help us discern what we're about to listen and take in from these individuals that we're about to just, you know, have a chat with. So when, when you prepare yourself mentally like that and you ask God for that, you know, that guidance, you, you can read anything. You can read anything. You can look into anything. You can look at any TV show because you need to be informed, right? You need to know what's going on around you so that you can better serve others, correct? So I went online and I did all this research and I found a lot of stuff online that says Christians should not celebrate New Year's because celebrating New Year's is celebrating a pagan holiday. So that was a shock to me, right? Because we all love New Year's. You know, we're all looking forward, for, looking forward to that new beginning, that New Year's resolution. I'm going to lose weight this year. I'm going to start a new business. I'm going to go back to school. And it's something to kind of um, help you reset yourself and put you back on track to what plans and ideas and like just, you know, just kind of like resets your clock, right? The whole idea of a new year and starting fresh. So as I was reading all this, I was like, huh, what a bummer, right? Because as a Christian, this was one of the holidays that I really enjoyed. 
I thought it was, it, it, they, you know, it's a very refreshing holiday it's, and, and it kind of renews you. So I kept on reading, kept on reading. And I'm going to share with you guys just very quickly some of the stuff that's out there. You know, in case anybody ever brings up the subject or if anybody wants to ask you, well, you're a Christian, what do you think of this? Now, now mind you guys, like I mentioned last time that we met and we spoke about um, paying attention to what you say. I, I don't know if, if you guys remember we spoke about that. I encourage you to always, always, always pray about what we teach. Whether it's me, whether it's Pastor Naviera, whether it's Pastor Luna, Pastor Rodriguez, you know, any of our teachings, pray about what we have shared with you. You know, always. So let's go back to some of the things that I found. One of the things I found is that the New Year's resolution goes back to Babylonian times, 4,000 years ago, when apparently they used to celebrate the new year and make these resolutions, right? That the next year they would get out of debt, that they would do things differently, so on and so forth. Then I also found that back in 715 BC, which you all know that's before Christ, right? It was a celebration that was done by the Romans to celebrate the Roman gods. But then I also found <clears throat> that New Year's came into play because of Julius Caesar. So. Julius Caesar felt that the calendar that they were using back in 46 BC um, was ineffective. And he gathered a bunch of scholars and astronomers and mathematicians. And he put together this new calendar based on the sun, right? The calendar used to have 10 months. And he changed it to 12 months which is the calendar that we still use today. It's a 12 month calendar. And so he decided that January 1st was gonna be the beginning of a new year. Great, there's so many stories out there. There's so many different versions of what a new year is. But my question is, as a Christian, should I be celebrating the new year? Right? So I said, now that I did my due diligence in the world, right, which was the internet and, and I looked outside the Bible, now let's see what God has to say about the new year. And the first place I want us to go, if you guys have your Bible open, if you want to look it up online like I do, is I found Psalms 104. You guys want to go ahead and join me. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. That sounds amazing, right? Okay. So let's look a little further into that. If you go to Psalms 100 and you start from the top, which is one, Psalms 101 says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. 
His faithfulness continue, continues through all generations. Wow, that, that is beautiful. I, I think that alone captures everything and anything that has to do with a beginning and ending and in between. It captures, you know, how we should start our year, how we should end our year, how we should live throughout the year, right? That, that right there pretty much captures everything in those couple of verses. But again, let's keep an open mind. Nowhere here does it say, do not celebrate New Year's Day. It also does not say, do not do New Year's resolutions, right? But it is telling us that we need to worship the Lord. And that we need to be happy when we do it. We need to sing joyful songs. We need to understand that the Lord is God. He who made us. And we are his, right? Amazing. So I continue to look and look and look because I want the Bible's version of whether I'm doing right by celebrating New Year's, all right? So we continue to, to look and I came across another scripture. Isaiah 43, 18 to 93 to 19. Okay, so that's Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. And it says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing new things. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And for a minute, I thought, wow, this is it. This is talking about the New Year's resolution, right? When we start a new year, when we, we want new things, we're going we're gonna to try new things, a new diet, a new business plan. Wonderful. So I said... Let's look deeper into Isaiah 43. So let's, let's all go to Isaiah 43 and let's, let's look further into what that scripture says. And if you read, we'll start at 16 and we'll read a little bit past 18. Now pay attention, guys, because remember, the focus is, should I celebrate New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, right? That's the idea, is as Christians, what do we do with this holiday, you know? Okay, so let's start. And we'll start with 16, it says, this is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the seas, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chaotic, the chariots, sorry, and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. All right, so let's go back a little bit because that sounds like a New Year's resolution, right? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Perfect. That's exactly what, what we want to do when we do our New Year's resolution, right? That, that's what we do every year. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, 
my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Okay, so let's let's stop for a minute and let's think about what we are doing on December 31st and we're waiting for that clock to hit midnight so that we can celebrate that new year, right? And let's, and let's focus a little bit on Isaiah 43. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Okay? We all have trial and errors. We can all probably write a book about what happened in 2022, right? I'm sure we could. But he wants us to not dwell on that. He doesn't want us to keep stressing over what happened and what didn't happen and how it happened and how it, it shouldn't have happened and so on and so forth, right? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. That is what we need to do every day. We should not have to wait until December 31st, midnight, to understand this verse. These scriptures were not written just for December 31st, midnight. This is an everyday thing. Our New Year's is every day. Our resolution is every day. Because as Christians, it doesn't matter how hard we try, we will make a mistake. We will fall short. It's normal. It's human nature. The idea is to not give up, not stop praying, not stop believing. The idea is not to be perfect because he's the only perfect one. You know, we cannot, we, we, we are not, uh, we're not saints. We're not Jesus. We're not Heavenly Father. But we do have to understand that every day is a new day. And every day we need to try harder than we did the day before. Not try to be perfect. Just try to be better than yesterday. All right, so let's continue. Um, as I kept reading, you know, this, this was a, a, an interesting, I, I could actually break it down and we would spend five hours online instead of an hour that I, I believe the pastor gives, uh, gives you, right? Um, but I'm trying to cut it short just so I can get to the point. The next verse that I found, now mind you, as I was reading online and trying to break down everything that I understood was related to starting over and doing a resolution, which is basically a promise. And I'm not gonna get into that right now, but when I started to look for Bible verses that spoke about promises, you have to be really careful because when we make a promise to God, it is not like when we make a promise to ourselves. You know, January 1st, when we do our New Year's resolution and we say, I am going to lose weight this year. That is not like when we make a promise to God, you know, and we need to be really, really careful and really have like 
an open mind and understand our actions. Mon like we said last time, monitor what comes out of our mouths. We need to monitor what we do and how we do it because we are trying to do right by God. We are trying to please him. We're trying to serve him and serve the people that he puts in our paths, correct? So we can't just be breaking promises like we do our New Year's resolutions. But that's another subject for another day. Let's continue to focus on New Year's, okay? So I also found 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Pay attention now. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look it up. Second Corinthians 5.17. Now, it doesn't say on January 1st, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. It doesn't say that, right? This is every day. This is once you come to Christ, once you give your life to Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So I want this verse to really sink in. Yeah, New Year's is great. It's exciting. We all love it. It's a new year. We're getting older right? Well, you guys are getting older. I'm not. I'm getting younger. I can promise you that. But um, every day that we renew ourselves in Christ, every day that we give ourselves to Christ, that we say, Lord, here I am. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Show me how I'm going to serve others today. We are new. And whatever happened yesterday, whatever mistakes we made, as long as you understand you made those mistakes. Now, let's not be ignorant about the fact that you made a mistake and you don't want to admit it, or you don't want to confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for for saying that, I'm sorry for thinking that, I'm sorry for screwing up the way I screwed up. Because we need to understand that that's going to happen. But we cannot be ignorant and think that, oh, well, you know, I'm human, so God understands. No, you need to come to him with a clean heart. You need to come to him and really say, I'm sorry, I do not know what came over me. Please help me so it does not happen again, right? So every day should be a new year for us. Every day, every day we come to Christ. Every day we pray and we ask for new wisdom. We ask for new strength. We ask that whatever mistakes we made yesterday, we don't make them today again. We ask the Lord to make us better people than what we were yesterday. And we start all over again. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? We don't have to wait until December 31st to start all over again. We can do that in Christ every single day. So let's continue to read. I also found Jeremiah 29, 11. 
This one's also really cool, guys. You guys, you're going to love this one, okay? Because remember, we're talking about a new year, new year resolutions, and starting over, right? Listen to what Jeremiah 29 says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and hope. Holy moly macaroni. Do you know what this says? This is saying that he already has a plan for us. We don't need a New Year's resolution. We don't need to wait until December 31st to be joyful, to celebrate. You want to celebrate? You can wait till midnight every night and praise Jesus at midnight. Every night can be a New Year's night. Tonight, you can stay up till midnight. And as soon as your clock hits midnight, you know what? Celebrate. Praise Jesus. Right? Because it's a new day. And you know he has new things for you. And he has a plan. And we have to trust that plan. But we also have to be willing to let him work in us. We have to stop fighting what he's trying to do with us. We need to stop trying to delegate what our lives look like. I'm not saying to not plan. Trust me, I'm a planner. But I have to learn myself. It, this, is, this is something that I'm doing, right? Just like I told you guys the last time, I'm trying to be really careful with what comes out my mouth. I have to stop controlling everything in my life. It's okay to plan because I plan this and I plan that. I plan on going on a trip. I plan on opening up a new business. I have a lot of plans. But I have to allow God's plan to work for me. I have to understand that even though I may have ambitions and plans, they might not work out. And I have to be okay with that because I have to understand, I have to trust that God's plan is bigger than mine. And there will be things that I want that the Lord will give me. And I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus, because I wanted that so bad. But guess what? That's because he wanted that for me as well. It's not that he was, he, he didn't say, you know what? You wanted it so bad. I'm going to give it to you. Nope. It was just a coincidence that that one thing that I wanted so bad was in God's plan. So go ahead and make your plans, you know. Decide what you want to do in life. Figure out how you think you're going to do it. But in the process, do not block God from doing what he has to do. You know, do not get upset when he does not give you that plan that you spend three hours trying to figure out how you were going to do it. Be grateful when something does not work out the way you wanted it to be. I know that's really hard. Trust me, guys. You're, you're, you're speaking to the it. It is really hard when we want something and we planned for that. And God says, oh, no, mm -mm. that's not what you're getting. And we don't understand at the moment because we're like, no, because I really want that. Lord, you don't understand how bad I want that. Because I just know that if I get that, that's, it's, it's it. Yeah, but you're not understanding that God's plan is, it's even bigger than what you could imagine. So, 
super, super excited about Jeremiah, right? Because I know, I, I can't be the only one in the group right now that feels this way, but I know that we get excited about our plans and we think we know better, right? Because it's our lives and we know what makes us happy, right? It's just, just human nature. So we have plans and we know if we could just get those plans across that everything's going to be great. I understand you guys, trust me. But now we need to like let go of that. You want to celebrate New Year's, December 31st? Let's celebrate it every night at midnight and learn to let Go and trust God's plan. Okay? Let's continue. So, there was a bunch of other stuff. There was a bunch of other stuff that I found online. I have to tell you guys. Really, really be careful with what websites you go to, what you read. Please, please, if you do nothing else, ask God for guidance and discernment before you read anything. There was, or there is, because it's still currently there, right? There's so much lunacy online. There is so much, so much misinformation, so much misguidance on the internet. It is insanity. So please be really careful. I'm not going to lie. I think I spent about three hours, if not more, just reading through stuff that just blew my mind. That there's actually people out there that would believe all this craziness about Christmas and celebrations and, you know, how Christians shouldn't celebrate this and shouldn't celebrate that and all this other craziness. You know, aside from it's not my place to judge any other denomination. I don't want to say religion because I really don't like it when people... Um, identify you as being religious, right? Me, personally. Um, so I'm just going to call it denominations. It's not my place to um, criticize or judge how other denominations manage their belief, correct? But it is my place to tell you to ask God for guidance in everything. Don't take my word for it. Don't take another pastor's word for it. Everything you read, everything you hear on your personal time when you are alone, ask God, Lord, the information that I just received, how accurate is it? Give me the discernment that I need to understand the information that I just received or the information that I'm about to receive. And let the Lord be the one to tell you if that is accurate or not. If that is something that will praise him. If that is something that he is okay with. Okay? Because I, I read so much stuff out there that, you know, let's just move on because we would spend five hours talking about all the craziness I, I read out there. In one of those, I'm going to read to you. We're going to read a Bible verse that I found in a page that I was reading that says that it is okay. The page mentioned how it was okay for Christians to celebrate because celebrating um, was okay with God, basically. I'm just, I'm just giving you the short version of, of the long page I read, right? But I wanted to understand more of why 
this person decided to post this on the internet. One of the first things that caught my, my eye about that was that the person put, um, you know, God has ordained the first festival, the Passover. And this person went on to write, you know, just a bunch of stuff, um, even saying that, um, you know, God mentioned that the, na- uh, the new nation in the first month shall celebrate, right? And, and a bunch of other stuff that I was very confused with. But this person that wrote this article, actually, I'm going to share the website with you guys. It, it's called BibleReasons.com was the website that I, that I found it on. Um, very confusing website. I was very confused with everything that I was reading there. And this person gave, as an example, this Bible verse. Now, before I tell you which Bible verse it is, here's another thing I want you guys to pay attention to. And this is why it's so important that you pray to God about everything that you're learning and everything that anybody preaches preaches to you about. This person put, 2 Corinthians Corinthians 2.16, that Bible verse says, therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regards to food and drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day, right? Now, very interesting because when I read that, if if you're not as uh, nosy as I am or as um, non-trusting as I am, okay, maybe I'm not, it's not that I'm non-trusting, it's just basically that I, I like to go to God, right, to better explain stuff to me. So when I read that, I was like, oh my God, this this can be so convincing for somebody that's just starting to walk in God's path, right? Because if you take a person from the world and you're introducing him to our world and they read this, they're going to be really confused. And they're going to say, but wait a minute. It says here, therefore, No one is to act as your judge in regards to food and drink. Huh. Now, if I'm somebody that is used to clubbing and drinking and partying and all this other stuff, that's what's going to blow my mind and it's going to confuse me, right? And And then it continues to say, or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. So what I did was, wait a minute. Let's dig dig deeper into this verse, right? And if you go to second collisions, I'm sorry, I said Corinthians earlier. It's real, I wrote this really tight on my computer, so. 216, if you look it up, let's look for it here. I have it somewhere around here. See if it didn't go away. It's actually a really, really long passage, right? So it starts in collision second, one. And it goes all the way to verse 23. So in order for you to really understand that passage and understand that that passage is not telling you to party and to drink and to celebrate everything that's out there to celebrate, you would have to read that entire passage, the entire thing, the entire collision seconds. You would have to read it to really understand 
what that passage is saying. I'm going to let you guys do that because it's really long and we would be on here for like another 30 minutes and it's already what I got like 15 minutes left. My point is for individuals like us, I'm going to say us because I'm new at this. I don't have the experience that Pastor Luna has, Pastor Rodriguez. Um, you know, they they are our seniors and our examples, right? So I'm gonna say us. We are learning. This is new for us. You know, we are gonna make way more mistakes than what maybe Pastor Luna and Pastor Rodriguez would experience today because you know they've they've seen it already right they've they, they've been through it already and so for us the newbies the ones that are are trying to do right by god and learn god's way and really want you know we we want to glorify the lord we we want to please him and we want to walk in his direction and his path you know we really need to dig into the scripture. We really need to like go in there and read not just the verse that we think is the one that's justifying our act. We need to read three verses up and three verses down or four. You know, don't just read that one, excuse me, that one scripture and then just justify or look for justification to your wrongdoing. Or an excuse to say, oh, see, well, nobody can judge me for, for doing that. Even the Bible says nobody can judge me. No, 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 no. Stop. Read further up and read further down. Okay? So that we're not fooling ourselves. Because at the end of the day, we're really just fooling ourselves. You know, it doesn't matter how well you act in front of Pastor Naviero, Pastor Luna, Pastor Rodriguez, in front of any pastor. Because if you're not doing what's really glorifying to the Lord when you're alone, when you're within, in your heart, then you're just fooling yourself. Because they can't see what's in our hearts, but the Lord can, right? So let's make sure we, we really uh, get into the scripture, really understand it, really read it, you know? Let's not be lazy and just read that one passage and just be like, oh, got it. No, you did not get it. Trust me, you didn't get it. Keep reading. It gets even more interesting, guys. Trust me. So let's continue. Throughout my readings, I found so many, many, many more that I'm actually going to encourage you guys. I know I last time I gave you guys some homework and I was like, all right, I want you guys to try this, right, for the week. So take some time this week. Look into the different areas in the Bible. You know what's really cool about the Bible also that I've noticed, that I've been learning, is that nothing contradicts itself. So you can, you can look for a subject in one part of the Bible or in, in one of the books of the Bible and then look for that same subject in a completely different book in three other books. And it will never contradict itself. So something really cool that I've, I've been figuring out. So take the time to look into celebrating. Because I personally, in today's uh, preparation, I did not find anything wrong with celebrating. What I am going to tell you that we're doing wrong is that we're only doing it once a year. That's 
where the problem lies. The problem is not that we're celebrating December 31st. Well, actually, there's two problems with how we celebrate December 31st. The first problem is how we're celebrating it. Are we celebrating it like the rest of the world? You know, we're going to the nightclub, getting drunk, getting high, you know, just doing all this stuff that's not pleasing to God. Because if that's how you're celebrating, that's a problem. Then we need to pray for you. Seriously. Like, I'm not even joking. Um, another problem is that we're only doing it once a year. And we shouldn't be celebrating just on December 31st. That's right. We should be celebrating every single day. Amen. So in my conclusion to my long, my long, long search, I do not think there's anything wrong with celebrating New Year's Day. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, please do not let anybody tell you that that's a pagan holiday. It's not. It's a pagan holiday if you choose to celebrate it as a pagan. If you choose to celebrate that day as a non-Christian, then yes, you will be sinning. But if you choose to celebrate it as a true Christian, with your heart set on God, then you're not sinning because at midnight, you are praising the Lord. At midnight, you're giving the Lord thanks for yet another day and a new beginning. And there is nothing wrong with that because that is exactly what he wants us to do. He tells us, I read you the Bible verses and you guys can look it up yourself. You know, the New Year's resolutions, yes, it's something you do every day. It's something you should be doing every day because every day we need to try to be better than the day before. Let's not wait once a year to say, this year I'm going to do better. No, do that every day. Every day when you wake up, choose to be a better person. Choose to do one thing better than what you did yesterday. And at the end of the week, you've already done seven things better than you did at the beginning of the week. Instead of waiting 365 days to say you're going to do something better. So um, I'm going to conclude here. This was my finding, my understanding. I want to give uh, Pastor Luna and Pastor Navia thanks for allowing me to share um, my thoughts and understanding on the subject. And if anybody has anything to say, the mics are open. Um, good evening, everybody. I believe this is an awesome, awesome uh, words that our preacher minister, Mildred, have brought today. And I would like to add on this. There's a, in the book Isaiah 61, 2, and um, Luke's chapter 4, verses 9, he said, the Holy of the, the Spirit of the, of the Lord is upon me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favors to proclaim the year of the Lord's favors. And she was so right. Everything that she said, I praise God for the word that he put on your heart. You did an awesome job. Thank you so much. I myself learned a lot, remind me a lot of things that I had to get. And it's got it so good to bring the young people into uh, Panda Vida ministry because it refreshes us thing that we, kept it in the past. So God bless you abundantly. Thank you for that word. And yes, let's celebrate every day the new year of the Lord because every day the favor of the Lord is upon you. 
for you to enjoy, to live, to praise him. There is no wasting time on that. Every day is a new day and we have to celebrate it. Thank you so much. If anybody would like prayer, uh, let me know right now. We're going to cross in prayer. I'm going to ask Minister Mildred to go back uh, to the phone and close with a beautiful prayer. Um, pray that she always does it. Thank you so much and God bless. If anybody need a prayer today, uh, please uh, say it now like that we can pray for you. If it's not, then Medjet, can you please call some prayer? Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be reminded that we need to celebrate and be joyful in the Holy Spirit every single day. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and we want to praise you today because you are so wonderful. You are so good. It is, it is beyond words. Like We are so joyful every single day that we are able to twice a week, three times a week, get together and continue to learn and continue to grow. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Pastor Luna. Continue to guide her, continue to bless her. Look at her health, her health Heavenly Father. Continue to give her the health that she needs. We are all still learning. And we need her, we need her guidance. So we ask that you give her the strength that she so needs to continue on her journey. We wanna give you thanks for Pastor Rodriguez, who is always quietly in the back seat, never speaking, but I know he's sitting there praying, supporting us. And without his support, we could not continue to grow either. We wanna give you thanks for everyone in the group, everyone that takes the time to come and sit with us and listen and pray and just be better people. We just want to serve you, Lord. That's all we wanna do. And so today, was a great day. Tomorrow will be a better day because we know, Lord, that you have a great plan for us. We have no idea what that plan is, but we're going to put our trust in you. Lord, thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.